Well, here I am. Um, uh, on this little talk, I'm going to talk about concentration camps and the uh, effects of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. We'll start off with Bergen-Belsen in Germany. Now, that was a concentration camp uh, actually discovered by the British as they advanced, and uh, quite a few people were killed there. Uh, on visiting this uh, uh, camp, which is now a memorial, um, you can see uh, mounds of earth and a little notice on the mound saying in this, under this, this mound there are 5,000 people buried or under this mound there are 10,000 people buried or 2,500 people buried or 1,000 people buried. And so when the British moved in there, they moved in with bulldozers and the operators were wearing gas masks and they bulldozed the bodies into holes and then covered it up with earth and had a rough count on how many were in each hole and put the notices up. And of course they were totally unidentified, but uh, there they were. Now, um, in the middle of this uh, uh, little memorial place, they had an obelisk, a four-sided obelisk, and uh, on one side it said this uh, monument is dedicated to the murderous Nazis who killed X number of people uh, at this camp. On the second side, there was the same thing in French. Uh, on the third side, there was the same thing in Hebrew. On the fourth side, there was a sign there that was in German, but the Germans had removed that. So you, you couldn't actually uh, read it very well and it wasn't there. So um, one wonders just exactly uh, what was learnt out of the uh, Second World War. And sometimes I think, well, maybe Maybe uh, we didn't win so much as we thought we won. Anyway, that's Bergen-Belsen. And now moving right along, we move to Hiroshima. Now, on my visit to Hiroshima, um, I firstly had a look around the place. And then uh, we, do, we had a look at this little monument. It's a sort of a horseshoe-shaped monument. Uh, a sort of a... Um, the shape of a... Um, a wagon but it's on the ground and there was a little inscription on it saying this monument is dedicated to the 10,000 children who were either vaporized, uh, killed, burned to death or died of radiation and, uh, and that was there you see so I had a look at this I said oh well there's something done there uh, and then uh, later on uh, uh, I've seen films of this uh, place uh, on TV and that, and that sign has been changed. It doesn't say 10,000 children killed there anymore, it just says dedicated to the people killed. So somebody's had a word in somebody's ear and removed that original uh, statement on the memorial and changed it to something not quite so uh, drastic or dramatic. Now I'm walking around uh, Hiroshima uh, when I was there, uh, there was a bridge uh, right underneath ground point zero because the bomb has exploded about two or three hundred meters up in the air and this bridge was right underneath it and you walked along the bridge and you could see the shadow of a woman and a child embedded into the concrete and that's all that's left of her she was totally vaporized but uh, her body and the child's body uh, cast a shadow on the concrete and that was still there when I was there. Uh, there are a lot of relics from uh, the bomb blast at Hiroshima. Um, there are tiles that had been melted together. There are bottles in which the, if the bottle happened to be laying down and then the top half of the bottle would sag down as if it was molten to the bottom half of the bottle so they made good ashtrays. Um, there are lots of people with the radiation burns and so, so on all around the, or all over their bodies. One old gentleman uh, was, would take his shirt off for so many yen, I think about 10 yen or something like that, which was a thousand yen to the pound in those days. And he would show you his back. It's like a, a uh, it looked like Mount Vesuvius of, um, erupting. It was a terrible mess. And uh, that's what the, the result of radiation burns. Now, uh, further than that, uh, uh, I had a friend, uh, one of my men that was working with me at uh, 
where I was in Kurei, or oh, Hiro actually, uh, married a Japanese girl, quite a nice girl, and they were, they were married by a Roman Catholic priest who was a German. Now the German had been there most of the year, most of the time during the war, uh, because uh, of course Germany and Japan were allies. Now this uh, uh, priest uh, was running around his parish on the day that uh, the de bomb was dropped, and he saw this huge flash in the distance, and he put his hands up to shield his eyes, and that probably saved his sight, because after the blast had gone past, all the backs of his hands had all the skin burnt off them. Uh, so that was that, and they also had a, uh, uh, in Japanese houses they have uh, a little memorial to their dead relations, and very often the more memorials in the backyard of the house. So this uh, particular house of this where he was, uh, the lady had a memorial there, and uh, the bomb blast uh, lifted this great big piece of stone, fairly heavy, and carried it uh, two or three hundred metres down the road and they discovered it in somebody else's backyard. Uh, so that, that was an interesting thing. Now, uh, the people that died at Hiroshima, uh, a lot of them died immediately from uh, the blast. Some died from uh, radiation within a matter of uh, uh, 24 hours or so. And some uh, got a lot of radiation and it took them a long while to die. A lot of them uh, decided to hide in, in the underground water canals, which was uh, apparently made good bomb shelters for conventional bombing. But unfortunately, of course, all the water in the canals uh, was, was radioactive. And these people died there uh, by the hundreds in these canals. And it was a hell of a job for our troops later on to pull out all the bodies. Uh, that was uh, perhaps worthy of note. Um, 